Hello everyone, my name is Dan Walsh, I'm a banjo player from the UK and um, I'm amazed, I've had so many requests for a uh, tutorial on how I play my version of Dueling Banjos which I posted a couple of years ago um, and I've been meaning to get around to it for ages and finally I felt the moment had arrived so uh, this video is going to be a full tutorial on how I play uh, Dueling Banjos in my version um, and I do note, do note that bit. It's very much how we play my version. It's not meant to be like an exact note for note replica necessarily of the film version, but hopefully it's a kind of claw hammer friendly version because uh, the film version is of course finger picking. So hopefully it's useful to you all anyway. Thanks so much to all the requests for it. Um, I'd really appreciate a like for the video. I'd even more appreciate uh, subscribing to the channel. Uh, that would be amazing as well. And if you enjoy this tutorial and if you enjoy my playing in general, um, you can also become a patron and um, for as little as two pounds a month, um, you can subscribe to me um, and get a whole load of stuff that nobody else gets. Uh, so an exclusive uh, version of a unlikely cover song, uh, a load of tabs of very different types of material, uh, both um, easier tunes and harder tunes, uh, a look at various different techniques, lots of videos and all kinds of stuff like that. So uh, if you feel like subscribe to the Patreon, the link is down below as well. Um, but anyway, enough plugging. Um, I hope you enjoy. We're going to cut to my version of Julian Banjos that I posted a couple of years ago when I had loads of hair um, and a really terrible camera. But we're going to watch it again anyway. And then um, once you've seen that, then um, we can... I'll break down each section of the tune and you can hopefully learn how to play it claw hammer style. So here we go, enjoy, this is Dueling Banjos. <laughs> Thank you. 
so for the introductory section, um, I utilised the thing that I suppose I utilised throughout the whole uh, performance. That's a hefty word, isn't it? Uh, throughout the whole video uh, of dueling banjos, which is to use a different tone for the guitar part and a different tone for the banjo part. So to try and create the illusion that there are two instruments going on. Uh, and very simply, just the guitar part, I tend to play here. So this is kind of on the fingerboard. If you've got one of those banjos with a scoop there, uh, that'll be even easier for you. Um, but basically, I just play the guitar part pretty much on the fingerboard and then the banjo part right up here near the bridge um, to give more of that kind of trademark twangy banjo sound. Um, stop me if I'm getting too technical. So um, that generally is what I do to create that, that effect. For the introductory section, um, so the very first thing I do is just play a G chord, which is your open strings, and I do that with the guitar and then the banjo. So just... Really simple. And what I try and do as well, I don't know how easy this is um, for everybody, but I actually use a different nail for... I use my index finger for the guitar part and my middle finger for the banjo part. Just to, again, just to create, make them sound as different as possible. That might be difficult if you're very, very used to playing with one nail, or if you've got like a chipped nail or something that might be difficult, but that's that's how I do it anyway. Um, and from there, um, the next thing is to play what is uh, called a G6 chord. This is very similar to what happens in the soundtrack version. So really simple, just second fret of your first string, and that's what you play for the guitar chord. And then the banjo part does this little trick, which again is very similar to the soundtrack. Um, which is where I basically slide a whole chord up to G. Um, so uh, if any of you have seen an F chord on the banjo, which looks like that, so ordinarily it's fret three, fret two, fret one, and fret three, like that. That's a normal F chord. If you shift that whole shape up to fret two, you get uh, an F sharp. And this is a daft little trick that I do to irritate people generally, is if you play that chord, and slide the whole shape up to G. But just to add a little bit of theatrical nonsense to it, I actually uh, hit this end of the banjo <laughs> so that it looks like I'm forcing the banjo to slide up like that. It's really daft, but it is quite funny. Uh, so that's what I do for that little bit. So you get the G6 from the guitar, and then the sliding chord from the banjo. You can string this bit out for as long as you like. If I'm playing it in a pub or something, I do tend to just string it out because it's, you know, it's just a good laugh. Uh, so then maybe we'll do something like this. Play one string at a time. Any rough similarity to that is fine. I don't think we need to be too exact about that bit. Um, next up um, is the first sort of theme that everybody definitely recognises, and that's this. So to do that claw hammer style, I'm basically playing a G chord open. So that's all your open strings, and I'm hitting four strings, followed by my thumb, then the four strings again. Then a C chord, which looks like this. So that's second fret, fourth string, second fret, first string, first fret, second string, and then back to your G chord again. Then the same at the banjo end. Um, and I do that roughly four times four times round, so four times once each instrument, if you see what I mean. So guitar, banjo, guitar, banjo, guitar, banjo, guitar, banjo. Or something like that. As I say, you can be fairly free and easy at this point. So after that, we get to, um, again, the other main thing that everybody recognises, which is, of course, this. Um, so to play that, we're going to play um, all downstrokes at this stage, really, because uh, it's so slow, you don't really need to utilise any slurs or hammers or anything like that. So um, the notes are B, which is your second string, C, which is your first fret on that same string, first string, 
second string. Then if you put a D7 shape on, so first fret, second string, second fret, third string, and play second string, third string, then take the two fingers off and play those two strings again. And then finally, second fret, third string, which is an A. So that's the phrase you get. times again as many times as you like really um, you're gonna play a kind of it's a little clip of Yankee Doodle I guess so the first little phrase is which is the guitar part so that's fourth string D third string third string again both G and then second fret is A second string is B Uh, third string G, um, second string again, and then second fret third string. Uh, that's the guitar bit. And then the banjo bit is like a sort of truncated version of it, so you just get this. So you cut it slightly short, so we get the two Gs. you to the next call and response section which goes something like this um, so that's uh, the guitar part so that is string three string five string three I mean the guitar part would actually pick the same note three times but it, I, to make it work for claw hammer I've done it this way so we're gonna go like that. Second fret, third string, second string, first fret, second string, first string, second, sorry, first fret, second string, and then open second string. Then the banjo responds with exactly the same thing. Guitar plays it again. Play it again. Then we go up to here. So what I'm essentially doing here is playing exactly the same phrase but in a different key. So I'm creating a capo, if you like, with my first finger at the fifth fret. So I'm just barring right across the fifth fret with my first finger. And then I'm using essentially the same shape that I did up there. So if you imagine you played it up there and that's your, your bar, that's my bar here. So what I'm doing is, so we start with the same pattern, 3-5-3 three, three with the right hand. That's 7th fret, 3rd string. 2nd string, 2nd finger on for fret 6. 1st string, fret 6 again, and then fret 5. So it's just like the pattern that we played down there but just in a as I say at a different point of the banjo so you play that on the guitar respond on the banjo then we go back to the the first one and respond then we're going to go up to fret seven and play the exact same thing that we played at the 5th fret. And then we're back to the strumming chords. And that takes us to the end of the if you like the slow free bit at the beginning and then the next section is when we're going to sort of kick the tempo in um, so make sure you've got all of that bit first in terms of what's coming next a lot of it is actually the same material that we've just covered but just at a faster speed um, 
But anyway, I'll talk you through all the next bit. Um, but yeah, have fun with that first section first and then we'll, uh, we'll regroup and do the second section. So after you've done your uh, theatrical strums, we're into the, the main uh, section where we sort of increase the tempo and everything like that. So uh, the first thing we do is play the opening, the sort of recognisable theme that everybody knows, but this time we're going to actually play it at a little bit of a tempo. So we're going to play... <laughs> Um, a slight detail, which I don't know how exact you want, depends how exact you want to be, I suppose, but um, the, the guitar one, so after you've just done this. All those notes are the same length. Bum, 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 bum. Whereas the response is, uh, is actually ba ba bum, 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 bum. So the first two notes are actually both quavers or um, eighth notes as I think Americans call them and then the rest are, are the quarter notes so one two and three and four and four like that um, don't worry too much about that but it's just I just thought I pointed out just so that I told you everything I know um, so yeah we get that little and then all the others are with the quaver and because it's a quaver rather than a crotchet we're going to play it a hammer there because um, as a general rule with claw hammer playing if we're playing on the beat of a bar so on a one two three or four we use our playing finger and then on on an and we usually play um, a hammer pull off slide or thumb um, so that's what we get there so after we've got that <laughs> bit of Yankee Doodle and in the film version this is both instruments play this so I just sort of play it roughly in the middle of the two tones I've been using and that's and then so exactly the same as we did before basically but just all in one place and then we tag on an extra note which is an F which is your third fret fourth string and that leads you into the crazy fast bit. So we get. And then we go into the fast bit. Now, in terms of the fast bit, um, I'll be completely honest, I totally make it up <laughs> every time, which I think is the whole idea, really, because it's kind of like a banjo improvisational bit. Um, I'll teach you an approximate version of what I usually play. But the idea behind this tutorial is that whatever level you're at, you can hopefully make this section work. So if you're relatively new to banjo playing, um, then what you can do is very simply just bum ditty the chords throughout the section. And I'll show you what I mean by that. So a bum ditty is where you play what a single string, which lasts for one whole beat. So that would be one and two. And so two is your brush of all four of the long strings and you play the fifth string on the and. So bum ditty is a very famous claw hammer rhythm which goes like that. So what you can do in this section is you can play simple it's quite fast but it's quite simple so the chords for that section are C G D or D7 G C G D or D7 and G so that's the simplest way to, to create the effect, I suppose, is if you bum ditty that whole section. Um, if you sort of have done a bit of drop thumbing, but you're not that confident with improvising and stuff like that, what you can do is do something like this. So um, bum ditty one, two, one, five, one, two, one, five with your right hand. 
is first string with your finger, second string with your thumb, first string with your finger, fifth string with your thumb. So we get this. So you get a little bit of variation that way. Um, so that's the very sort of chordal based approach, if you like. But what I'll teach you is a little sort of, like I say, an approximation of what I might do. But I can't remotely pretend that it's consistent because the whole idea is it isn't consistent. <laughs> so uh, so I'll show you what I do anyway, um, more or less. So I start by doing this. So we're starting off with the C chord, and actually I start with the bum ditty one two one five rhythm that I showed you just now. So that's third string, crush thumb, one two one five, and then I take my second finger, I leave the rest of the chord on, hammer my second finger on the third string second fret, crush thumb, then back on the fourth string. So we get. G, third, third string open, and then this little lick, so that is fret 2 to fret 3 slide on the third string, first string, fifth string, fret 2 pull off on the fourth string, and then the third string again. So, so far we've got this. classic bluegrass lick basically if you play your first and second strings together and you're going to play you're basically going to climb up the second string so open first fret second fret and then hammer from fret two to fret three on that second string and as you do so form that little d it's like a d power chord so um second finger third string third finger second string don't know why it took me so long to say that sorry uh so and again i'm doing that little bum ditty one two one five hammer brush thumb one two one five and then so that's fifth fret first string second fret first string first string second string Two to three slide on the third string, and then the third string. And then I'm going to recycle this lick from before. So that's the first half of the little banjo improvisation bit. And as I say, please don't take this as like an exact solo from the film, or even from my version, because uh, it's all generally improvised, but I'm just giving you a sort of, you know, some of the licks I usually do. Um, so that you've at least got something to go on if you're uh, if you're not so sure about improvising. So to recap all of that, we get just a couple of bum ditties on the end, and then. You basically play the whole of that progression again. So you can just play exactly what I just played twice. That would sound fine as well. Um, what I always seem to end up doing on the second one, I think because the film does something similar, is I, when I've got my C chord on, I add my little finger on the third fret of the third string to form a, a C7 chord, which just gives you a bit of a, a different kind of tone. Um, something like that. So that's hammer. Brush thumb, one, two, one, five. Finger on, play that string. Brush thumb, thumb, brush thumb, back to G. And then for this little bit, I did something like this. That same slide. First string, fifth string. 
2nd fret 4th string, then into the D, and same ending. Something to that effect. Anyway, as I say, don't get too hung up on the exact details of that. Have fun with it. And as I say, whatever you decide to do, if you decide to just bum ditty the chords, if you decide to do a bit of drop thumbing the chords, if you do exactly what I did, if you do what I did mixed with some other stuff, it's all good. All I would say is make sure that the chord progression is right, because that's the bit that matters, I suppose. So as long as the chords come through in what you play, then I think you're, you're on to something, basically. Um, so that's like the first little banjo solo bit. Next up, we have another call and response section. Okay, so uh, then we're into the call and response section, but at speed. So we're essentially going to do exactly what we did before with this bit. So it's all of that. The only difference is, um, t again, to sort of try and help create the difference between the two instruments, for the guitar part, I'm not playing fifth strings after all the notes. I'm just playing it after the first note, as before. Whereas the banjo part, I'm playing a fifth string after every single note. So I'm putting a fifth string in every available gap. So it just helps, again, just create that illusion of two instruments going on at the same time, even though there's only one of you. Um, so that's that bit. And then once you've done all of that, we're going to do the uh, the G, C, strummy thing. To be completely honest, I kind of abandoned the rules of claw hammer at this point because it is getting very fast <laughs> in my video. So uh, rather than doing like with your thumb, I might do that. I can't remember now. Anyway, what you can do is literally just strum them. And do it that way. Um, and the number of times it happens is... Myself is guitar, banjo, guitar, banjo. Simple as that. And then after that, we return to the main theme, which is this. And again, those are all downbeats. So essentially, you end up with a bar of 6 4, which means you end up with a bar with two extra beats in it. So one, two. to the fast bit again which obviously we've already been over I sometimes put that in that little slide so that's I'm putting second fret fourth string second fret fret third string and sliding it up to the third fret so two slides and then a so I put that little bit in there. I tend to play a different solo the second time to the first time, but again, just go with the flow, make it up, see what you fancy doing. Um, so you play all of that. twice as well I do all of that twice just because it's a laugh and I think they do in the soundtrack as well um, and then once you're done with that you get to near the end and then you get this ending uh, uh, we get that little ending as well which I'll show you now so I did so that's 5th fret 1st string, followed by your 5th, uh, just on its own, and then followed by the 5th string. So it's all the same note. 1, 2, and, and then 2nd fret 1st string, open 1st string. Uh, slide up from 2 to 3 on the 3rd string, 1st string followed by the 5th string, and then your 3rd string. Worth noting, again, this isn't exactly how the film version goes, but it's just what I do in my 
version. I think the lick in the film version is slightly more bluegrass friendly because he plays it with the picks. This is sort of like a claw hammer approximation, I guess. And then you get this. So what I'm doing there is I'm putting on a D7 chord and just sliding it up to the one fret higher and then followed by a brush thumb. At slow, obviously it sounds hideous, but, but at speed it kind of works. And then eventually when you, you can do that for as long as you like, to be honest. And then eventually when you're done, you just play the third string on the end. And then you get this little phrase at the end. Oh, sorry. Need to remember to take my finger off. So we get this rather horrible sounding uh, little pair of notes. So you're going to play a B on your first string, which is your ninth fret. And a B flat on your second string, which is your 11th fret. So obviously that sounds horrendous just in isolation. But again, in the flow of the tune, it kind of works. Then you play the 12th fret of your third string with your little finger, followed by the fifth string. First string open, and then back to your 12th fret on the third string. Need to sort my intonation out, but that's uh, like that. Then I'm doing this. Oh, sorry shape it's that one so this is like a little sort of diminished shape so you're going to half bar on fret two which means you cover the first and second strings with your first finger and then your second finger goes on the third fret of the third string and you're going to do a roll so what that means is you play your third string allow it to follow through the second string and the first string and play the fifth string on the end then slide up from fret 2 to fret 5 on the 3rd string, like that, so... And then 4 to 7 hammer on the 1st string, and then the 5th fret of the 1st string, which is your G, and then a G chord to finish off. So put that all together and you get... Sorry, I forgot. There we go. Um, so that's the whole of Julian Banjos. We're finished. That's the whole lot. God, that was an epic tutorial, but I hope that uh, most of it made sense. Any questions, feel free to fire them away in the comments. Um, and if you would like any tab for this, uh, you will need to become a patron. Uh, I will post it on that page. Um, you can subscribe for... Uh, there are different tiers. You can subscribe for £2, £5, £10 or £15 and you get varying amounts of stuff every month for that. Um, and I've posted absolutely loads of videos, tabs um, and tutorials and all that sort of thing on the page over the last year and a half. So there's tons of stuff there if you're interested. Um, and obviously it's great because it supports me making a living and stuff. Um, but thank you all so much for watching. I really hope you enjoyed that tutorial. I've had loads and loads of requests for it. So it's great to finally get it out there for you. Um, so I hope you enjoy having a go at that. Um, let me know how you get on. And um, thanks again for watching and happy picking and stay safe. And I'll see you soon. Thanks very much.